What's cracking, my peoples? Welcome back to the H Quarters. It's your man's Nicholas. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football. It's Friday, so we're doing a mock draft. Uh, I'm going to do this one on ESPN. I'm going to do this in a – actually, I don't know. Y'all will come along with me and we'll figure out a team uh, a time. This is how this video is going to go, I guess. Figure out a size and a – oh, it's starting in one second. Did we get it? You mother – Budger. All right, well, we're just going to have to wait until uh, until the next five minutes. It's so dumb how they start them every five minutes. Just fucking start them when they close up. Anyways, uh, we're going to do this one on ESPN. We're going to do probably, I guess, a 10-team league. We're going to do a standard league because I've been getting a lot of requests to do a standard draft. However, 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 we're going to do a zero – should I do this running back or zero wide receiver? We're going to go zero running back because I've been preaching so much this year. Um, What the – dude, ESPN has got the worst, like, aesthetics for mock drafts. It's unbelievable. We're going to do a zero running back draft. Um, Now, if you're unfamiliar with what that means, what that strategy implies, basically means that you start your draft off. The first few rounds of your draft are without that position, right? Zero RB would mean you don't pick the running back for – I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it at, let's say, at least three rounds, maybe four rounds, and you only pick other players, so only wide receivers, tight ends, quarterbacks, whatever it is you're going to do. Um, and the theory is kind of just to zig when other people are zagging, where this year in particular you see a lot of people like myself preaching getting one of those workhorse backs, whether it's Bell, Gurley, Zeke, David Johnson, or if it's the back half of the first round, a Leonard Fournette, a Melvin Gordon, one of those kind of guys, and kind of fading the first round of wide receivers. But in years where we see those kind of strategies happening, we see a lot of uh, value at the wide receiver because we're coming off a historically bad year for fantasy wide receivers. So when we expect them to kind of bounce back and and come back to the norm, right, people are going to be like, oh, I wish I had taken wide receivers early. So this is uh, an experiment. I haven't done a zero RB draft yet, so I'm actually kind of – intrigued to see how this works out and if I like my team or not. Again, this is with standard scoring, so uh, running backs are usually more valuable because the receptions don't really mean much. So we're going to play into both of these types of league settings. Uh, I have the seventh pick, so just kind of thinking about it, I'm assuming the first four running backs will go up the board. Antonio Brown, maybe DeAndre Hopkins. I'm actually thinking I'm going to be moving my uh, Odell Beckham ahead of DeAndre Hopkins in my rankings, um, which will be in my update for next week's draft guide. If you have not yet grabbed the draft guide, um, the link will be down below. I'm uh, hearing a lot of good feedback, guys. Keep giving me all the feedback that you possibly can on the draft guide, good or bad, and I will be making weekly updates to it. I'll actually be making it as we go. It, the updates will be in real time. So if you looked at the draft guide, say, yesterday, it's possible that when you look at the update tracker, there is new updates in the draft guide this time around. So um, – They will be updated uh, real time, but you will get emails on Wednesday telling you like what updates actually happened. Um, But yeah, you can go check in at daily on the thing and see if there's any updates regularly, or you can just wait till Wednesday to see what happens. Anyways, yeah, my rankings are in there, top 250 overall, positional rankings by tier and whatnot. But I think I'm gonna gonna start taking Odell ahead of DeAndre Hopkins, Um, and I'm hoping that he'll drop to seven. The cool spot about, you know, especially if you're going wide receiver early, the back half of the first round is a really, really, really good spot because you don't have to reach. Like, I wouldn't say seven is a reach for Odell because he was widely going as, like, a top five pick last year. Um, You can grab Odell there, and the the good part about it is on the second half, the the back end around is you'll probably still be able to grab a guy like a Michael Thomas or a Keenan Allen or an A.J. Green or, if you're lucky, a Julio Jones. Um, So if if you're going to go – If you're going to do a zero wide receiver or zero running back draft, uh, I think the spot to be in draft wise is definitely from like the seven to 10 range, probably eight to 10 would probably be best, but I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm excited to see how the team works out. I mean, I'm nervous that, um, you know, the running backs I end up getting are going to be kind of shitty off the top of my head. What I'm thinking is if I go three rounds, the first three rounds with just wide receivers or tight end, I could probably go something to the tune of, OBJ, Michael Thomas, um, and then either Gronk or Gronk, Doug Baldwin, Stefan Diggs in the third round. And then um, let this just stop. One of those three in the third round. In the fourth round, 
you know, that's when I guess like the next probably like four or five rounds, I would just be going running back. We'd be like high upside guys. Well, not all high upside guys, but I, I would like, I, honestly, someone asked me on Instagram the other day, uh, who is like the lowest or the highest, I guess you'd say the worst ranked running back. I would be okay with having as my RB one. And I think that would be Darius Geis actually, especially in a standard. He's going to have tons of value in a standard league. If I can go through three rounds and that Geis, Geis is my one. And then, you know, on the next two rounds where I have like the seven and the 13, you know, the two kind of flip picks, if I can get like Geis and Alex Collins and maybe JGI or something like that, that's like really not a bad thing. If you're starting off with, you know, OBJ and Michael Thomas in your two, uh, in your first two wide receiver roles, but we'll just have to see how this thing plays out. And we are joining the left right now. Um, I dropped a video on LaShawn McCoy yesterday. My thoughts on him. Uh, if you missed that, it's up on my channel. Uh, I haven't been on the ESPN mock drafts in a long time. I forgot how they looked. They actually changed it. This is definitely not how it always looked. Um, God, I can't wait to get a fucking haircut tomorrow. My barber's been booked for like two weeks. I never usually go a month without getting a cut. Um, but it's time. And, uh, yeah, the Shady video is up there, and I talked about that. And, you know, definitely if, if something happens with Shady in terms of him not being able to play, which is probably going to be the case, they probably will sign someone else, whether it is DeMarco Murray, whether it is – I don't I don't understand why people are so hyped up on DeMarco Murray. He was so bad last year. Adrian Peterson was way, way better than DeMarco was. So I still see I, – I could totally see Adrian Peterson signing with the Texans. I'm surprised the Texans haven't signed one of those two yet, to be honest with you. Um they could, even as DeMarco Murray is a capable pass catcher, I'm surprised they don't use him instead of Lamar Miller. Um, but, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Adrian Peterson and DeMarco still ended up on, like, the Texans' bills in those situations. So so here we are, 10 teams, seventh pick, standard league. I'm going to do a zero running back draft. Let me see the rankings here. Wow, they have Zeke at five in the standard league. That's just fucking embarrassing. ESPN, like, what are you doing? It's amazing that a, that a platform can have this many resources for it and still just put out garbage content, just like garbage. I legitimately think, and maybe I sound like a piece of shit right now, but I legitimately think if, if they hired me at ESPN, I would be the best fantasy analyst they had. And that's not even saying that I think I'm that good. I just think ESPN is trash for how big of a platform they have and how much they don't take it seriously. But, yeah, let's see these these rankings here. So, yeah, even a Devontae Adams is a guy that I would pick at the 14 spot given the fact that it is standard. And you're not expecting him to catch 90, 95 passes like a Michael Thomas, but his touchdown upside is just as high as any wide receiver in the league. Probably is. I don't know the uh, – I, I didn't see the Vegas odds on who the touchdown leader was for uh, receivers in 2018, but if I had to guess, it would probably be – Antonio Brown, and I can't imagine uh, Devontae Adams is any worse than, like, third on that list. One of my subscribers, I forget uh, who it was, but thank you, whoever it was that sent me the the odds for rushing totals. Uh, Vegas put out the odds for who they think is going to lead the NFL in rushing yards. Zeke was number one. Uh, I think Le'Veon Bell might have been two or three. I know Leonard Fournette was... <laughs> Okay, so we're on the clock. Todd Gurley won. Cool. Yo, if Zeke falls to me at seven, I don't even care that this shit is a mock draft. I don't care that I'm doing a zero running back theory. I'm taking it. Just out of fucking respect. Respect my mans. Zeke. I'm thinking about going Zeke number one overall in half PPR leagues, too. As crazy as it sounds. You know, I talked about this in my draft a lot, in my draft guide about, like, don't let the influence of, like, 15 catches really sway you. Because, listen, a guy like Zeke, what was he on pace for? Probably 40, over 40 catches last year, maybe. Um, you know, if, if he's going to end up with 40 catches and another guy's going to end up with, like, 55 and you're going to pick him over him because of that, like, that's a, it's a dumb strategy when you look at it because – it's an extra 15 catches, which equates to an extra seven and a half. If you're in a half point PPR league, seven and a half fantasy points on the entire season. You know, when you put it that way, you're like, oh, maybe it's really not that big of a deal. I know there's more receiving yards to it, but like Zeke's going to end up getting 20 goal line carries. Zeke's going to get 400 carries on the season. Like they're, they're already talking about giving him like 40 fucking carries a game. Not really, but like he'll be up there, man. 
All right, let's go. We had Todd Gurley, Le'Veon Bell, Zeke. One, two, three. Coo, coo, coo. Let's see. Uh, they got Julio ranked number eight up in here. They have Odell as the fourth best wide receiver. Cool. All right, let's go. I hope they time people out who don't fucking get yeah, it. They're cool. Team Beck. Yo, y'all been watching the World Cup. I've watched like one game of it. Croatia and France play this Sunday in two days. Um, if you guys want to join, I do a, a live stream every Sunday. It's kind of like a Q&A. Life, love, liberty, the pursuit of trappiness, fantasy football Q&A, whatever you want to ask me. I do it every Sunday morning, usually around 1 p.m. Eastern time. Going down the shore this weekend. I'm going down the Jersey Shore. Yeah. I'm going to be pumping my motherfucking fists for a few hours. Actually, for more than a few hours. I'm probably going down Saturday during the day. Stay in Belma. Stay there overnight. It's going to be a good-ass time. My friend's got the most amazing. So my friend, if you guys have watched any of my, my the E-Town Get Down, my Big Money League's like live drafts, you know how I vlog those every year? All right, so who they take? Antonio Brown, Saquon Barkley. So my man o Odell is on, on the board. I'm going to take Odell here, as I discussed previously. I just don't think the talent level is even compar comparative, to be honest, between D-Hop and Odell. Uh, I think as long as Odell is on the field, I know people are – People aren't realizing how fucking good Odell actually has been the last three or four years. When he's on the field, he is an entire specimen of his own. Um, D-Hop had by far and away the best, most efficient, voluminous, voluminous, however you say that shit, season last year in Houston. And I expect major regression for Deshaun Watson. Um, you know what's an interesting – another interesting take on the Deshaun Watson thing? Player profiler, when you look at Deshaun Watson – Right, people are talking about his regression um, and, and his efficiency numbers. Like, obviously, those are going to come down. But here's something that actually kind of stood out to me: his interceptable passes. So he had 13 interceptable passes. He only ended up with I forgot how many interceptions he ended up having. Does it say up here? Uh, no, it only says interceptable passes. But that means uh, let me see. Those are just bad passes into traffic that should have been interceptable. So the fact that he had 13 of those, and what did he end up with? He only ended up with eight interceptions. He should have had a lot more interceptions, and a lot of those um, drives that he had those interceptable passes on ended up uh, as touchdowns. So those, his numbers should not have been anywhere near where they should be. I just I just think this whole Eastern offense is going to come down a little bit. They have the easiest strength of schedule for rushing, or I think overall they have a very easy strength of schedule. So good game plan, um, good game script in terms of the rushing offense. For Houston, not so much passing. They're going to have a much better defense who's going to be relying on low scoring games and uh, a rushing offense. I just, you know, I'm just not, I, I don't want to use a top eight pick on DeAndre Hopkins this year, guys. Not that I think he's bad. I can't say he's bad. He's a, he's a bowler. Okay, so we had after my pick, after Odell is Alvin Kamara, DeAndre Hopkins, Julio, Kareem Hunt, Leonard Fournette, Keenan Allen. Cool. Uh, it's actually perfect. Now, I'd be deciding here between Michael Thomas and Devontae Adams. The thing is, in any sort of PPR, it's Michael Thomas without hesitation because he catches 90 to 100 passes. Um, but Devontae Adams' touchdown upside is so high. I'm still going to go with MT because I'm really a fan of him um, – absolutely busting out this year. I think him and Drew Brees are going to have major bounce back years. It's not like he didn't fall off whatsoever. I think he caught 95 passes last year. And uh, the only reason people are were even – the only reason people are not considering him up in like the top 10 range is because his, his touchdown numbers dipped from 10, uh, 9 to 5. That was because their usage in the red zone dropped and uh, they ran the ball so much down there. And I think especially with Ingram out for the first four games, they're going to be passing a lot more down there. So, oh, shit's fucking running through. Uh, so we had, let me see, Michael Thomas, Cook, Gordon, A.J. Green, LaShawn McCoy. Oh, I'm going to assume that was an auto pick or this guy beats his girlfriend, Christian McCaffrey. That's an, Christian McCaffrey in standard leagues in the first. I would I don't even know if I'd take McCaffrey in the top three rounds, to be honest, in standard. Devonta Freeman, Devonta Adams, Gronk, Evan. Oh, shit, it's my pick again. Okay, so I have my pick of Baldwin and Stephon Diggs here as my wide receiver three. Now, in a vacuum, um, I might pick Baldwin because, listen, we've seen the 14 touchdown upside from him. We've seen his really big years. Uh, I'm going to go with Stefan Diggs here, though, because he – specifically because 
I love. I I think Stephon Diggs has realistic top five fantasy wide receiver upside, and I like getting him as my third wide receiver here because now uh, you're not relying on him to com- to produce consistently as a wide receiver. So if he doesn't happen to hit that upside, you're okay because you have two awesome awesome wide receivers that are going to uh, you know produce for you like at a monster level, and. Um, Now we're heading into round four. Wow, Jordan Howard is still on the board. So we're going to have our pick of actually a lot of really good running backs. So this is for people that draft on ESPN. You're seeing this right now. There is a lot of value late at running back. They value wide receivers very heavily, especially in standard leagues on their rankings. So we have, wow, they have JJ all the way down here. I'm just going to filter to running back. I might, yeah, there's no more value at wide receiver over running back right now. So after Diggs, we saw Doug Baldwin. Oh, there you go, Darius Geis. So Darius Geis ended up going round three. I could totally understand that in standard leagues, guys. I made the whole point when I did the Darius Geis versus, uh, what's his face, Rashad Penny. I just think Geis is a monster. So we had Geis, Demarius. Oh, God, that Demarius Thomas pick makes me want to fucking throw up. Josh Gordon, round four. So we still have McKinnon, Mixon, Jordan Howard. Travis Kelsey just went off the board. Interesting. I actually would have thought about Kelsey here. Um, so, you know I'm high on McKinnon. You know I'm high on Mixon. But in a standard league, I'm going to go with Jordan Howard. And this is a guy I actually tweeted about him, and I talked about him on my Instagram a lot this week. Who else we got here? Um, yeah, it would definitely be... You know, in standard leagues, there's some pretty good value at running back a little bit later, but I don't expect this to really happen in normal drafts where Jordan Howard would fucking fall to you in the fourth round. So Jordan Howard's a guy I've been having trouble kind of analyzing because I usually do my analysis from like a half PPR standpoint. And Jordan Howard just has fucking feet like hands, right? He's got cinder blocks attached to his wrists. He just can't catch for shit. Um, and in this offense, I'm like, You know what? The point I made was this. It's like, okay, so imagine the Bears offense in 2017 without Jordan Howard. Like, you you can't really imagine it, right? They have no running game. Without Jordan Howard, they literally don't have a running back. Like, they have Terry Cohen, but Terry Cohen's a playmaker, not really a running back. They would never start using him and giving him 12 to 15 carries a game. That's the thing. I can't see any sort of imaginable 2018 season where Jordan Howard is not heavily, heavily utilized in this offense. And he's someone who has found the end zone regardless of them being a really bad team over the last couple of years offensively. Um, So now he's in this offense with Matt Nagy, who should present way more scoring opportunities for, you know, overall on this offense. So I think like Jordan Howard, someone who I'm not necessarily targeting, but I'm not going to be angry, especially if I'm going wide receiver heavy early. Jordan Howard's a guy that I'm okay with getting um, as my RB1, you know, and I'm, it's kind of crazy that I was able to get him after uh, after Stephon Diggs in the third round. So that's, that's pretty gnarly. Let's see who's left. Um, Doris Landry, terrible standard pick. Uh, oh God, I don't see a lot of value here left. I'm next pick actually. So who they go with? So it's been oh uh, they took they took my man Sony. Wow, J- Joe Mixon just fell to the fifth round. It's absurd. Alshon, Sony, Michelle, Kenyon, Drake, Juju, Ronald Jones went before Alex Collins, Rashad Penny, Royce Freeman. I like Royce Freeman a lot in standard leagues this year. Um, I don't like any of the wide receivers right here at value much. Derrick Henry still on the board. He's someone I would start considering around round five in standard leagues, especially. Um, I'm going to go with Alex Collins here. Um, oh, JJ was still on the board. I forgot I made that. Uh, I made that video. I didn't realize he was still on the board, but I made that video, Alex Collins versus JJ. And guys, I got to tell you, man, it, the more time that has lapsed between that video, the more I think I like Alex Collins. Or at least that gap has gotten closer and closer. I don't even know if I could tell the difference between them anymore. Dude, I like I, I like Collins' talent just too much, man. I just think he's such a good running back. You know, he was one of the top recruits coming out of high school. He was a stud in college. And dude, I don't know. There's like nothing I don't like about Alex Collins' game. And I feel like 
I feel like I don't want to look back and be like, I knew that. Like, I knew how good of a fucking running back he was and then didn't pick him because I was just scared of him, like, kind of falling off. Um, and then him busting out. Because he is someone – I don't I don't think J.J. has the upside that Alex Collins has. I don't even think it's going to be even close in, the, in that sense. I think J.J., like I said, has a, has a better floor. Um, but – I, I just I think Alex Collins is just a really 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 damn good running back. I think he just brings so much to the table, and I, I want that upside, especially if I go uh, if if I go with wide receivers early. So so a lot of wide receivers go off uh, after me was Landry Hogan Penny. Ah, uh, Hogan would be a guy I want. So I have basically my starting lineup filled. Um, I probably wouldn't be looking at tight end unless I saw a value here, and it's too early. I only have ten seconds left, so I'm gonna have to pick now. Oh Lord, Lordy Lord! I get. I'll actually go with Derrick Henry here. I'm not mad about that. I'm. T- you guys know I'm. am pretty far off of Derrick Henry in uh, in fantasy this year, but in a standard league, sixth round, I am definitely okay with uh, with getting Derrick Henry, especially as my running back three. Because I'm not gonna have to play him every week, but in good matchups where the Titans are supposed to be heavy favorites, that's perfect for Derrick Henry. Guys, I don't know. Like the guys that like Henry. I would love for you to leave me a comment down below. Like, what do you like about him? He's not a good runner. He's like not really a good running back. The only the only like remnants of good stats he had last year because he broke off a couple big runs at the end, like running down the, the clock at in the end of the fourth quarter. So um I don't think Henry's a good running back. I don't I think Dion like look at Matt LaFleur coming in and his offense is going to be very quick moving. Look at the the numbers Todd Gurley put up as a receiving running back last year. He caught, I think, I think he caught 60. Four balls for about seven hundred twenty-two. Let me let me check these numbers. What Gurley did in the passing game last year: sixty-four catches on eighty-seven targets, seven hundred eighty-eight yards, and six touchdowns. I think that uh, Deion Lewis is going to come extremely close to those numbers, if not surpass them, and just get a, an absolute ton of opportunity in the passing game. And I think Derrick Henry is going to be almost a zero in that sense. So, oh, Sammy Watkins just got picked. Zam. So, yeah, so I forget what I was even saying. But, um, yeah, I'm okay with – I'm wow, the, the rankings are very different here, <coughs> obviously, on ESPN. So I'm okay with uh, Derrick Henry here where I'm getting him now, but I'm definitely not someone who's, like, sold on Henry. So right now I'd be looking between – uh, the only guy I'd be looking at really right now would be Corey Davis because I like his upside, but I don't really need that right now at wide receiver. I like Delaney Walker. You guys know I love that. I like I have Evan Ingram actually ranked ahead of Delaney Walker. I think I might have switched it. Uh, I saw, but in a real draft, if this was really what was happening, boom, I would go at Lamar Miller here. I saw him last second. Lamar Miller is a guy who does not need to be dropping to the seventh round in drafts right now, and he won't be as long as this kind of stuff keeps up because Deonta Foreman, is coming back from an Achilles injury, and that's something that we have seen very, 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 very few running backs come or any NFL players, skill players, come back from successfully. So it's going to be very hard for him to come back and really play a big role, especially the fact that I feel like he's going to start the year on the pup, which would put him out the first six games, which means that backfield is pretty much all Lamar Miller's. And regardless, listen, guys, in redraft, you don't chase efficiency. Um, you chase volume, and that is what – Lamar Miller is going to be. And plus he was much, much better with Deshaun Watson under center, who was obviously going to be under center in 2018. So uh, again, see, this is actually working out well because there's a lot of, I like my lineup so far, OBJ, Michael Thomas, Stefan Diggs, and then my four running backs, Howard Collins, Henry Miller. I think two of the four will be super, super good for me this year. So, um, and you still have, oh, did Jamal Williams go off the board? No, Jamal Williams is here. Honestly, if this was my real draft, Ah, Delaney Walker's still there. I should take him. Nah, fudge it. I'd rather have a running back, to be honest. I'm going to go with Jamal Williams here, and I'll explain this. I think I might have explained it in one of my other videos, guys. Jamal Williams, as soon as Aaron Jones got suspended, shot up my rankings. And I know I made the video on Jamal Williams versus Aaron Jones. Guys, you, you can't – fantasy football, you can't fall in love with players. You have to fall in love with ADPs, their draft position. That's the thing. It's all about value, and it's all about getting your guy. So Jamal Williams, as soon as Aaron Jones got suspended, that just gave way to Jamal Williams as being the starter there, right? And even if Aaron Jones is better than him, now we won't know if he'll ever get that chance. Because if Jamal Williams balls out this first two games, which he very well, Mel, very well might. Goddamn, 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 goddamn. 
might because, I mean, last year he was pretty bad, right? He had uh, low yards per carry. He was one of the least explosive running backs in the league last year. Um, he had like one run of 15 yards if he even had that. I don't remember. Um, but he also wasn't with Aaron, uh, Aaron Rodgers under center. Now he gets a start with Aaron Rodgers under center. If he could successfully run with Aaron Rodgers under center, which is probably not crazy to think that will happen, um, that will uh, that will probably, you know, they're not going to change their game plan. If Jamal Williams is doing really good, they're just going to keep feeding him one, even if Aaron Jones comes back. You know what I mean? So that gives me a, a big leg up for Jamal Williams, and I love him as my fifth running back, as someone who could be a possible RB2. Um, so we saw Delaney Walker go off the board. I'm going to go with Kyle Rudolph here. He is in Minnesota, of course, and he is a much better – this is perfect. This actually fell in, in so good because he's a much better standard league tight end than uh, – than any sort of PPR league because he is a touchdown scorer. He's not a high yardage guy. He doesn't get a ton of receptions. Um, decent decent reception mark, but uh, much more of a touchdown guy. And we have Kirk Cousins coming in who loves to utilize the tight end. We've seen the success that he had with uh, Jordan Reed a couple years ago. Um, and I'm totally fine having two pieces of this Minnesota passing offense because I think this is a team that's just – Going to be very, 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 very good with a lot of scoring opportunities. Kirk Cousin is a it's not a great red zone thrower. He's actually been pretty bad over the last few years, but he still managed to throw like 30 touchdown passes uh, last year, and I think he did it in the year before too. So even if he's if, if he's not efficient in the red zone, he still gets the job done, and this is going to be a defense that sets them up with great field position over and over and over again. So Kyle Rudolph, I am perfectly fine getting in the – what did I get him in the 10th round as my, uh, as my tight end in a standard league? That's perfect. Uh, would I even start looking at quarterbacks yet? Honestly, I don't know. Probably not because there's so many good quarterbacks on the board. I'd still look at like my flex options. Um, did I take a, I haven't taken another wide receiver after, after those first three, which is kind of like what you do. I think that's, that's a pretty big strategy when if you're going to go zero running back or zero wide receiver, or even just going heavy on one position in the beginning, Really what you want to do in the middle rounds is start stacking up the other position because those guys, while they're less likely to produce, you know, you give yourself more opportunities. You give yourself more at-bats with guys that are less likely to hit that. So you have your wide receiver ones that you get in the first round, two rounds, three rounds, and then all the other running backs are probably RB2s with RB1 upside. So if you can give yourself five at-bats with RB2 threes, good chance that, you know, one or two of them breaks off to be pretty good top 24, top 15 running backs. That's what you got to do. Just give yourself a bunch of at-bats. Wide receiver, wow, wide receiver got fucking thin quickly. I don't like really any of the value here. I think next week – well, next week's in the Muck Monday is Marvin Jones versus Golden Tate. I just writ, wrote up that uh, that piece. Um, ooh, there is one guy in here I absolutely love. That I don't know if I'll have to take him right now. I'm going to skip on him now, and hopefully he comes back to me. I'm going to take on Johnson because I think his upside is just absolutely monster. I would have d- debated Rex Burkhead there too because apparently he's supposed to get some goal line where I think he's going to be heavily involved. I would be fine with him and Sony Michelle on my team. Um, I think he's going to be heavily involved in the passing game and the running game, maybe on the goal line. Who knows? Um, okay, awesome. So the guy I wanted who was a wide receiver is going to fall to me. Awesome. So Alan Hearns, if you've watched like any of my videos that I've talked about Alan Hearns, you know how much I'm in love with him. Um, he's the clear coat wide receiver one in my mind. It's not even a shadow of doubt in my mind. He was awesome with the Jaguars his first two years as he played on the outside. And um, as we, uh, uh, you know, he, he put up a thousand yards, 10 touchdowns in his sophomore year playing on the outside. As soon as they moved him into the slot for the last two years, he was in the slot uh, dealt with injuries, and that's when he started falling off. But when he was on the outside, he was a good a good receiver. He's 6'2", 200 pounds. He's got the size, and he's penciled in as the X receiver. He's supposed to be taking over that Des Bryant role, guys. And you look at Dak. Dak loves tall receivers. Going back to even his college years, his tallest receivers that he was throwing touchdowns to were 6'5", 6'2". These were guys like Jason Witten. These were guys like Des Bryant. These are the guys he loves to throw to, especially in the end zone. So I see Alan Hearns being the number one target there without a doubt. Uh, Terrence Williams is involved with some off the field stuff. I don't even know if he's going to be like around to play. So if you're high on Michael Gallup, that's fine. You're wrong, but he's not even going to be a starter if Terrence Williams is in the uh, is in the building and on the team. But uh, yeah, that's what I was. I forget what else I was even saying. 
But yeah, I love Alan Hearns, guys. Don't make the mistake of um, passing on Alan Hearns. He's a boring pick that's going to get you some good, uh, so, some good production this year. Um, I'd probably start looking at a quarterback right now, maybe. I probably don't even need to yet. When I wait this long in the draft, I probably will end up taking two quarterbacks. Even though there's still a lot of really, really, really good. See, this is what I was talking about. When I was like QB breakouts and I was like, I don't want to reach for Pat Mahomes or Jimmy G. If they're going to fall to like the 12th round. I'm going to go with Big Ben here. It's because I love this Pittsburgh offense this year. And he balled out. Second half of last year, he threw up 2,500 yards, 19 touchdowns, 16 game pace, 5,000 yards, almost 40 touchdowns, not including the 465 passing yard game, five touchdowns against Jacksonville in the playoffs. Big Ben was scorching motherfucking hot last year to end the season. Uh, so give me so give me some Big Ben there. Damn, not another quarterback was taken after that pick. So I, Actually, Matt Stafford was. He would have been my other pick. So kind of happy I went Big Ben. I might take like a flyer on – uh, someone else at the end of the draft, or even maybe Pat Mahomes, but I would be looking at other guys right now. Um, who do I like? I like Anthony Miller, but not so much in a standard league because he's playing out of the slot, so he'll catch a lot of balls, even though I do think he's going to score a lot of receptions. So we're looking at uh, DJ Moore's cool. Yeah, I'll grab Anthony Miller here. So I do think he's got just a knack for the end zone. Be right back. Or just don't put in either one. Yeah, so I just think some dude just got a knack for the end zone, and Anthony Miller's one of them. You look at his college numbers, he put up I think 33 touchdowns over the final two years, like 18 his senior year and 15 the year before that, which is insane. Um, I just, I don't know. I just, some, some guy, he works really, he's a really good route runner. He works really well in tight spaces, which is why a guy like Antonio Brown, despite his size, continually puts up 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 touchdowns in a given season. Because even in those tight spaces in the red zone near the end zone is when you, um, is when you would continue to pass smaller guys like Miller. And since he has those attributes to him, that's why I think he's just, I don't know. I, I'm just all in on him. So we are 14th, 15th, 16th round. Okay, interesting. So we're in the last rounds of the draft before I have to pick a defense and a kicker. See, this was a mistake by me. I didn't actually look who Big Ben's first week opponent was. It might be a bad matchup, so I might have had to take a, another quarterback. Maybe not. I don't know. I, I'm going to take another quarterback just for the shit of it just because Pat Mahomes is on the bench. He has that high upside, obviously. Sick, so. Yeah, they won't let me take anyone else. And so I talked about it in my draft guide on uh, in terms of defense. Defense, defense, defense. What you want to do if you're a streamer like me, I stream defenses. Um, I look at the first week schedule. So I look at who the NFL team is playing that first week. I always take the defense, the second to last round, kicker, last round. I look at who the defense is playing in the first week. And I remember the Saints have a good matchup. They play – so the, while you might like the Chargers or whoever better, I'm someone who just streams because, for the most part, you're not going to be able to predict who's a good fantasy uh, defense. That usually ends up being whoever has the most scores, and defensive scores are very hard to predict. So at the end of the year, all these defenses are separated by, like, 0.2 points per game for the most part, unless you're getting an elite. There was an outlier of a year for Jacksonville last year. So um, I don't remember all their matchups off the top of my head. I just knew the Saints play the Bucks week one at home who are obviously without Jameis Winston. So that's a good defense that plays at home that they're a seven and a half point favorite and Jameis Winston's not playing. So um, I'll go with the saints there. And if I need to stream a different, a different defense based on matchups week two, I'll do that. But if you're a streamer, that's my piece of advice. Look at week one matchups before going into your draft. So you know, which defense is to target. I know Baltimore and New Orleans has very good defensive uh, matchups for that first week. And then I'll just draft. I'll draft any kicker. I don't really care. <laughs> you want to come around here? My dog fucking shoot you. Um. So kickers, yeah, I just pick one on a high team. I just pick one on a high scoring team, high scoring offense, and that will not be Chris Boswell because I will not take the Pittsburgh kicker because they. Go for two, way too goddamn much. Who's a good offense? Uh, I'll go with Philly. 
And that's my squad. So I actually really dig this squad. No pun intended on my man's digs, but um, started off zero running back. And I am actually really happy. If I this would happen in a 10-team league, I'd be ecstatic. OBJ, Michael Thomas, Stephon Diggs, Jordan Howard, Alex Collins, Derrick Henry, Lamar Miller. That's absurd. This is this is amazing running backs for going zero RB. Kyle Rudolph, carry on. I love carry on. Y'all know that. Alan Hearns, Big Ben. Yeah, uh, I love this team. And, you know, I just mess around. So maybe next week I will do zero wide receiver, which is pretty much what I've been doing in most of my mock drafts anyways. But um, that's going to be it for today's vid. If you have any questions, if you uh, if you want to draft on the, on the draft app, D-R-A-F-T, for all y'all illiterate sons of bitches, um, use the promo code BDGE when you sign up. You will get a free $3 entry into a real money league. So that's draft.com slash BDGE. Use promo code BDGE. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. If you're listening via podcast, please leave a five-star rating and review. I'd love you for that. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll see you all on Sunday for the live stream. Make sure you got notifications turned on, peoples. Peace.